back to another episode of More Sewing with Michelle. On today's episode, I'm featuring that gorgeous quilt in back of me called Phoebe, and it's designed by a quilt artist named Laura Heine. Now, I fell in love with Laura Heine, oh my gosh, so many years ago. I have made over 20 quilts um, that feature her designs and her patterns, and I've got so many more downstairs. I probably have eight to 10 other patterns that I haven't yet created. So this is the pattern for Phoebe that I'm gonna go over today. I'm gonna talk about the techniques and how I create these Laura Heine patterns, and especially Phoebe. I'm also gonna talk about finishing. So it's all about collage and Laura Heine designs featuring the Phoebe pattern. Let's get going. So what describes a great artist? I want to tell you what I feel is great and what makes someone um, a step above the rest. So someone that uses their extreme creativity and their attention to detail. They use their passion to create works of art. Taking normal materials such as threads and fabric and creating something fantastic that's pleasing to the eye. Something that when I gaze upon it, I feel something and it makes me, you know, have that creativity where I want to create it too. And I get an emotional attachment to that particular work of art. Anyone can be an artist. We all know that. But it takes something special to make a great artist. And Laura Heine's ingenious designs, her use of collage with animals and picturesque designs, takes that normal um, art into something that's amazing. And I feel that makes her a great collage artist. Um, not only does she make me smile, but she makes other people smile, which is always apparent. When I'm at Road to California, which is a quilt, um, um, quilt show here in California, and her booth is always packed to the gills. And um, Laura Heine is so approachable. I've talked to her so many times. Um, um, and she's just the, the nicest person. And it's so reflective in her work. She's kind of like, you know, you have those favorite musical artists that you have, and you know that every time they create a new album or a new song, that you are going to immediately have that in your playlist. For me, it's kind of like Keith Urban. No matter what album he comes out with, I know I'm going to love it. And Laura Hine is the same way. When um, I go to Road to California, where I'm at a quilt show that she's at, I can't wait to see her next designs and to see what twist she's taken and um, has created something that's gonna inspire me and many other people. So this is how I feel about Laura Heine. I feel that absolutely she is a great artist and her talents and her use of fabrics and textiles, I think are her passion and she loves to create these things. And I tell you one thing, I love that she creates them too. I have watched her change a little bit over the years as far as some of her techniques and, and how she does her collaging. And maybe she's just expanded um, the different ways of doing it. So I've got a lot of quilts that um, I've made of hers, like I stated, but I'm gonna show you a few of them as far as finishing, as well as um, how to put it together. And I am gonna show you a little bit, you know, of a demo with the Phoebe quilt in back of me. So. That's how I feel about Laura Heine. I absolutely, hands down, hands down, feel that she is absolutely my favorite um, collage quilt artist. She just inspires me all the time and I can't wait to make the next one for her. So Laura Heine is my inspirational quilter and let me get talking about some of the other details. So let's talk about the Phoebe um, pattern. So this is um, the way that they come. You will get all the instructions. So no matter what type of way you're going to do it, you will have complete instructions from Laura explaining exactly her technique from start to finish to make this amazing quilt in back of me. Now there's lots of different products and 
items that you can use when you create um, with collage. A lot of it has to do um, with what you know maybe, what you're comfortable with. If you're just starting out, I recommend go ahead and do Laura Heine's way, 100% from start to finish. Um, and if not, I'm going to show you a few different things. But what I love about this Phoebe quilt design is that it is perfect if you're just starting out with collage. Maybe you've been a little bit frightened about all those little pieces. Well, this one, the pieces are very large. They're fun and easy to put together. And you still get that wows a feel with the completed quilt. Um, you can still do a lot of detail work and with the leaves picking that the different leaves and textures of your fabric are going to make that quilt so unique and it's one of the reasons why i love collage is taking the fabrics that i choose that i love and putting them in a quilt so that it's really a unique piece for you so i love that all of laura's patterns come with a full picture so that you can refer back to exactly the way that you like it. And then I also have already opened up. This is her pattern for Phoebe. And look, it's pretty much so true to life size here. Um, it's huge. And no matter which um, pattern you're using of Laura Heine, you will get a full sheet that um, has everything so that you're able to trace. Now, when you're tracing, there's several ways that you can do it. I find that her patterns are easy enough to put whatever I'm tracing it onto um, just on top and go around it because there's nothing on the back side. It makes it easier for that. You can use um, your daylight light box or any other way of tracing, but you're going to want to trace this pattern onto either um, a steam -a seam, a, um, a different foundation fabric, and I'll go over with that a little bit later. But also one of the first things that I do is I number and letter the different pieces. So you can see that the flower petals are numbered. I have down here, the leaves on the bottom are actually alphabetically titled. And then I have some Roman numerals for the other pieces. But I like to label everything so that way if I am cutting out maybe a couple days ahead of time, and then when I finally get that time to sit down and quilt, I already know where everything is and I don't have to second guess what piece goes where. And I refer to these as a guide as well as a pattern. So that's what I like to do when I do any Laura Heine um, quilt. Now I want to show you real quick. This is the first quilt I ever made of Laura Heine's and it's called Hip Hop. Um, it's a bunny, but you can see this technique is way different. It's still floral applique, but the way it looks is different. Now with this one, I cut out all of these little flowers and placed them on top. And this technique can be very frightening when you're first starting out with a collage floral applique type of thing. So that's why I think it's so important that if you're just starting out to start, whoops, my wire got caught there, to start with something that has big, bold pieces. That way you can get the technique down and you can create a quilt and then you can gradually steer back to all these little bits and pieces that make the other Laura Heine quilts so fun and just such a blast to create. So let me get a little bit closer and I'll show you some of the finer details. Okay, so Laura Heine actually is from Montana. She started to quilt when she was pregnant for the first time. She was a registered nurse by trade and she decided that she wanted to make one quilt and that's where this all started. Now she um, owns a company, a quilt store called Fiberworks in Billing, Montana. And here's a funny story about Laura. Um, she won her very first quilt contest and she won first place. And she was so excited until she looked around and she realized she was the only one entered in that division. But I tell you, she would have won first place even if there were other people. So that's just kind of a little funny story. Now, Laura is first an artist. She's a businesswoman. She's a quilt designer. She's actually an author. She's a teacher, an inspirer, and she's a fabric textile designer as well. 
Now let me get up real close and you can see some of the stitching I've done. Now on the petals here, I love to use my decorative stitches. So you can see I use several different types to go around these petals. And we'll go over here. I use different threads so that they all stick out. I also use free motion. If you look on the center of this one, I use free motion to accent. And then the same thing through the stem. Now the stem, I did straight line quilting. And then around all these leaves, I did, let me find one where it sticks out a little bit more. I did a decorative stitch as well. And I added one stitch straight line quilting in the center. And then I always, I like to have my things balanced. So I added some dirt on the very bottom. So it looked like Phoebe was growing out of dirt and not floating in the air. And then I did alter a little bit. If you look at my flowers, I added little pistols on the inside, um, but I just love it. And you can see that I have rough edge on my stems, um, and you can see a little bit of fuzziness around here, whereas these ones, they're very much so secured. So I am absolutely a renegade. I just do what I like. I do what I think looks good, and you know, the finished product, I just hope is worthy of Laura's design. So that's the close-up of Phoebe. Isn't she cool? I love her. So I know you want to make that amazing quilt in back of me. Phoebe by Laura Heine, one of my favorite collage quilt designers. So in order to do that, you're going to go to moores-so.com or you can click on the link in the description and you can pick up this pattern today so you won't be without Phoebe in your life. So there's some things in all of Laura Heine's patterns that are the same. You're always going to find her amazing instructions, which I want to add. Um, there have been many patterns that I have tried to create where I read the instructions, and you may have heard me say this before, and you kind of go, what are they trying to tell me? I don't quite understand the terminology um, and the way that they wrote the instructions. I have never had that problem with Laura Heine patterns. They are very easy to use. They make sense. And um, it's never going to be a problem to create one of her designs. So that's a huge plus in my book. Um, I don't like the moments where you're scratching your head going, hmm, I want to get right down get everything cut out, and get to sewing and creating the part that I find so enjoyable. So with Laura Heine, like I said, there's several things that you're going to need. First off, you're going to want um, a base fabric. And I like to use neutrals. Um, I like to have a little bit of whimsy. And Laura does that too. Um, you can see on her Phoebe, she has some words and a little bit of pictures on the quilt in back of me. I actually have words and then there's these um, dots that are randomly throughout. So I always like to have some sort of interesting background or backdrop for whatever I'm creating for Laura Heine. I just think it makes it look that much more impressive and fun. And then you're gonna want to have a variety of fun fabrics. Now, um, I like to dig in through my scraps, but oftentimes I will pull out um, a particular color, a particular pattern. Sometimes it's the texture to the fabric and use it. So it all depends upon what one you're working with. What I love once again about the Phoebe is that we're working with some basic colors for the petals um, as well as the center part of the flowers. And then the leaves I just used, I think I duplicated a few of the actual fabrics in there twice, but I used such a variety to have um, to show the definition between the light and the dark and to have it just look neat. And that collage -y type of feel that we're going for. So you're going to want to have a good variety of fabrics. Now on um, Laura's instructions, you will see on the back page here, she goes exactly how many pieces of which fabric you need and um, colors, the whole nine yards. So you're never going to be kind of in the dark as far as what you need when you get your pattern. It'll be very easy to gather your supplies and to go ahead and start creating. So once you have your background fabric and this quilt, let me tell you real quick, 
This quilt is 41 by 52. I think most of the time, I will be completely honest, sometimes I will grab a fabric and that kind of, as far as the background, that kind of dictates what size the overall is. Sometimes with some of our other quilts, I like to add more foliage to the size. So don't feel like you have to be exactly at 41 by 52. You can make it whatever you want. And I think mine's a little bit bigger, but I love that it's a, it's a large enough quilt where you're gonna be able to use it for a lap or in a baby's room or a wall hanging, whatever you wanna do with it. It's not so small that you're gonna invest a lot of time. Um, I like the sizes, I guess is what I'm trying to say, of her quilts that she comes up with. There have been times, like Abilene is really big and I made her over large so that she can be on top of a bed. And also Seawell, the turtle, I made extra large too because I loved her use of that particular one with the backgrounds and all the fun fabric. So you make it your own. You know, I often say, take that, something that you love, and then you can twick, twist and tweak it to where it's exactly the way you want it. So that is how I do my background. Now you're gonna want um, a, back, a backing piece of fabric as well as the batting. And typically every time I do a Laura Heine quilt, I like to get my quilt sandwich, which would be the top fabric, the batting and the backing completely put together first. Now, there's lots of ways that you can do that. Um, sometimes I will go ahead and do a quilt background design with straight line quilting or with free motion. Other times I will just leave it blank and then I will fill in the stitches later. On Phoebe and Back of Me, because she has such large open areas, I went ahead and I just did my quilt sandwich and then I started piecing the fabrics on top. I then um, quilted the, the elements for the flower, and then I went back and did my straight line stitching that is my background for the quilt last. But there's no right or wrong way here. Um, I, I don't even think Laura Heine goes over that besides the fact that she gives you options. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of a video later that shows you some of the different things that I've done to secure um, applique. So you can see that too. But those are the basic things. Now, once you get your pattern, remember I said this big pattern, you're gonna wanna trace it. Now, there's several ways that I suggest you do that. You can do it exactly the way it is on Laura Heine's pattern, or you can trace it onto freezer paper, and you're gonna wanna use it on you're gonna to wanna to draw onto the paper side. And I suggest you use a Sharpie. And as you can see, I'm gonna hold this up. You can see those lines right through there. Now, another way that is probably the easiest for any beginner is to get some Stima Seam, or this one um, I have here is a Heat and Bond, and you can trace the same way. Now, the great thing about this, let me untape mine here is it already has an adhesive on it. So let me unwrap it a little bit. So on one side, you will have the uh, adhesive, the other side is paper. So you're gonna trace onto the paper, you're gonna fuse it onto the fabric choice that you have, and then you will cut that out, and then you will kind of do it like a puzzle where you place it exactly where you want to be. So that is probably the easiest way to go about it. Um, because it's secured when you do your stitching. Now, if you're not comfortable um, with free motion or stitching around, or if you haven't done too many quilts, I absolutely suggest that you use um, something with an adhesive. Now, there are other routes to go, which I often do, and um, you can take, if you use your freezer paper, you can take that, you're gonna cut it out, pick your fabric, and then you're going to, I iron my freezer paper onto the fabric, and that way it makes it easier to cut that out. And let me show you what that's like. Okay, so using your pattern, I simply traced, this is onto the freezer paper, and then this is onto the double-sided adhesive. So either way, I'm gonna kinda show you how to go about it. Now, um, you can use a pencil. I like to use a Sharpie when I do that. And the other thing that I like to have is my serrated scissors when I'm cutting around. 
So I'm going to show you, I'm going to cut these apart real quick. You're going to take your fabric. Keep in mind when you're doing applique, you want it to be reversed. So I'm just simply ironing this on. You can see now I have my freezer paper ironed onto my fabric. And what this does is it makes it super easy for you to cut around these pieces. Kind of gives it a little bit of stiffness and I love the way it works. Now, this is perfect if you're kind of a little bit more advanced and you're comfortable with your sewing abilities. Now, if not, like I said, you're gonna take that same piece, which this is K, and I'm gonna iron on the double-sided adhesive. Let me get away some of this extra adhesive so it doesn't make a mess. Okay, and I'm simply gonna put it onto my fabrics. Keep in mind, every double-sided adhesive has different temperature um, information. So you're gonna to wanna to check whichever double-sided adhesive you have to make sure that your heat level on your iron is at the correct setting. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one out as well. And these serrated scissors just cut it like butter. There we go. So now I have one with adhesive and I have one without. Now, let me show you. Let me get my fabric up here. So this is my background fabric, we're gonna say. And then basically, you're gonna take this. Now this is the one without the adhesive, and it just, that paper just comes right off with the wax. So then you can lay it down whatever way you want, and a couple ways that you can secure that. Now, oftentimes I am comfortable enough with my sewing skills that I will just go ahead and pin it and go from there. If not, one of my favorite things to use is Free Fuse, which I've shown before, and it's a powder and you simply kind of put it down where you want and then you can iron that on and that's going to secure that fabric for you. I love Free Fuse because you can put that adhesive exactly where you want it. So you're just going to apply your iron until that free fuse is completely fused and you can see it's on there nice and good. Now the other way to do it was to use the double-sided adhesive. This way, like I said, is super easy. You're going to then expose the adhesive on the opposite side and you can see that it's got that shiny area. And then you will simply place down your leaf wherever you want it and iron it down. Simple as that. So that's why I love this pattern. It gives you all the difficultness of doing an applique, but it makes it so easy. Now this one is also the double-sided adhesive. I'm going to go ahead once again, expose it can see that shininess where the adhesive is, and I'm going to just simply lay that on top. And I'm gonna iron this one down too. Making sure that you use the correct amount of heat for that particular adhesive is super important. So now I've got three leaves on there. They're not exactly in the right order, or in the right position, but I wanted to show you just how easy it is to go ahead and lay these down um, with your iron, with free fuse, or a double-sided adhesive. It's not a difficult process by any stretch, but it is a rewarding one. Another thing you can do if you don't, um, if you're a little bit more comfortable, I guess I would say there's layers. If you're just starting out, I suggest to use the double-sided adhesive. If you're a little bit confident with your sewing abilities and also using a walking foot, I would say free fuse. And also you can use your glue stick to basically secure the edges and that way it'll secure everything down. And then the other way, if you're an expert or if you like a challenge, um, go ahead and use pins. And I like to use just a little bit of the glue stick right on the tops of the tips of things. And that way I can make sure that they don't shift either. 
the, basically you're going to want to use the adhesive to make sure that nothing goes off kilter or gets out of place when you're doing the securing stitches, which are super important anytime you do applique. So now oftentimes when people do applique, they will do a satin stitch. Now, if you've seen applique in machine embroidery, generally they have some sort of satin stitch on top or a decorative stitch to secure those edges. And there's two different rules. I think I've talked about both rough edge applique as well as um, a finished edge applique. So with this, it all depends upon what you want to do. And I've done both types with my Laura Heine patterns. I have done where I do free motion and I go around three times each and every little piece that I put down. Um, sometimes um, I will do a grid pattern, but I'm, not, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to show you all that a little bit later. So once you have that basic technique that I just showed you, then it's just a matter of doing a puzzle, taking your pattern as well as um, the picture and designing exactly how you want it to look, where the pieces go. I do like to take um, my number two pencil and mark the very center so that I can make sure that things are plumb because let me tell you, I have done it more than once where I think something's centered and it'll be centered right here, but then all of a sudden I start curving off. So, and I have to undo it and start over. So I do like to have some registration marks and I will use my number two pencil just on the base of the fabric to make sure that my design is going exactly where it should be. Another way that you can do that also is you can take the pattern and trace it onto your base fabric. And I've done this before where I've gone maybe about a half inch closer all the way around. So that way I know where my pieces go, but I'm not gonna have those lines show. There's no right or wrong way. And I love that about Laura Heine. And I love that you can make something so creative and so unique with just her pattern. And I tell you, I have taught Laura Heine classes for years. And I've even had where people will talk about um, the seahorse. Um, and the seahorse, I've had classes where we've had two different people doing the seahorse. And I tell you, your fabric choices and all those little bits and pieces that you add, make it so unique and make it yours. And um, I love that about that. I love that about quilting all the way around. So that's the basic technique to doing the applique process. Now let me bring in a few quilts and I'll show you how I finish my Laura Heinies. So finishing. Um, so this is another quilt that I made. This is the cat and, um, I think it's called perfect cat, but you can see on this one, I did just some basic quilting on the back, but in the actual cat, you will see that I did a grid pattern across all of the cat to secure all of those edges. So it's straight line quilting, super easy as opposed to my hip hop bunny, this one here, where I went around each and every piece of fabric, all those little itty bitty pieces, three times doing free motion. So there's two different ways that you can do it. Now I've also had people in my classes um, take the seahorse and add a netting or a, or a um, chiffon on top and then do some basic stitching to secure everything. So there's lots of different ways to get super creative on how you want to stitch out and make those quilts more um, yours and also the finishing. Now on this one here, I simply did a diamond pattern for the background. And on here, like I showed you before, I did straight line quilting here. I did um, free motion in the centers and then I used a decorative stitch. And keep in mind, since it is a quilt, you're gonna wanna use your walking foot for your machine to make sure that everything goes through the machine and those feed dogs at the same time so that on the backside, you don't get puckers and pleats. The other thing also, when you are making your quilt, make sure that you have everything secured correctly. And I think that's about it. So be it either if you do straight line quilting to secure all these edges, or if you do free motion, or you can quilt by check where you send it out and someone else does all the, the stitching for you. Either way, there's so many options 
to finishing your quilt. So there you go, The Phoebe Quilt by Laura Heine. I hope you are as inspired as I am by my favorite collage quilt designer, Laura Heine. A few things that you might, might want to remember to pick up from the Morse landing page is the 505 to add your backing to your batting and your top piece to the batting to make your quilt sandwich. Also, the free fuse. Love free fuse. It makes it easier um, if you're adding those um, pieces onto your quilt and you're not using the double-sided adhesive. The other thing that will be helpful also is the quilter select glue stick. And don't forget, whatever adhesive you choose to make your Phoebe quilt will make it the best for you. So decide what level you are. If you want complete security, where the whole piece of fabric is completely secured with a double-sided adhesive like steam sieve or heat and bond, that's perfectly okay. Um, and if not, we have other options for you. I think you're gonna totally enjoy making Phoebe and it might be the start of many more Laura Heine quilts for you. I hope you've enjoyed this week of more sewing with Michelle. I look forward to seeing you again next Monday at 10 o'clock. And until then, have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.